how to set up a Discord server for your stream so you can talk with your community. This video is sponsored by own.tv. On own.tv you can get your own emotes. And yes, you can use these on Discord as well. You can use them for your stream, but you can also definitely upload them on your Discord server. You can pick pre-made ones or make them yourself with the emote maker. You can even make your own animated emotes. Isn't that super cool? And with code TREE, you got 50% off. Link is down below in the description. To make your own Discord server, I recommend downloading the Discord app first. So don't do it in the browser, but in a Discord desktop application. So this is how Discord looks like, and this is my server. To make a new server, you click on the plus, which says add server and create my own. If you want to do it just for your friends here, but for Twitch streaming or for YouTube streaming or any other community, club or community right here. You can give it a server name. You can call it whatever you want. If you have a name for your community, put it in here. If you're gonna make a server all about a game, you can put that in here. For me, I'm just gonna keep it tree server just to keep it easy to remember. Here, I'm gonna upload an image which is basically one of these images you see here on the left. It becomes a round circle. So I'm gonna click on here and we're gonna browse for an image. So I have my emote here of a cow. So I'm gonna click on this one. As you see, it makes it a circle, even though it was a square. So some things might be outside of this frame right now. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna click on create. Now it made a new Discord server and it automatically puts it on the top of your server lists. Now you're the only one in here. <laughs> Let me start now. We have a general chat and a general voice chat. To make a new text chat, we just click on the plus here. We can call it whatever we want. Media, for example, and we can create it. Now this is a new channel. We can create as many as we want uh, memes. Same goes for the voice. Just click on the plus and make sure that you click on the voice for this one. You can call it uh, Overwatch Chat, for example, and create a new one. For voice chats, you can use a space. For text chats, you can't. So if you would type something like that, Overwatch Chat, a dash in between will appear. You cannot remove this dash. You can also have categories. So this is a category with text and voice channels. Right click underneath it, create category. Now here we can give it a name, uh, info for example, for the information channels. And we can drag them above. Now we have information channels here. If you make a channel with socials, for example, we have it in the information section. We can lift these and place them somewhere else. Just drag and drop. You can even have your voice chats in the same category as text chats. You don't have to have it in a category called voice channels. For Twitch streamers, what do I recommend you have? An announcement channel where you can tell people when you're live and when you're posting videos. What we're gonna do is click on the plus text channel and call it announcements. Create. I'm just gonna put that on the top right here. What I also want is a rules channel where we can put all the rules in so we're also gonna make that and also put it on top. So these are the two top channels. I would recommend that because then people can keep up with things and read the rules. If you want people to be able to pick certain roles, you can also make this rules and roles. So now they can find the rules and roles that they can pick or explanations about roles right here. Okay, so these two are really important. And if you go to my own Discord server, you can see that I have rules and roles here. It explains the rules in my server, it explains what these rules mean, but also I want streamers to be able to get the streamer role themselves. So I have this bot. If you click on this emote, you will automatically get this role assigned. Same goes for the commissional artist, goes for the content creation podcast, and it goes for Twitch, YouTube, and community night alerts. If you want to set these up, I recommend watching this video because I explain how I do it right there. Then I have an introduce yourself channel. For me, this is the place where all these notifications come in saying that somebody has joined and people can also like say who they are basically in this channel. The announcement channel, this is where I post whenever I go live on Twitch or whenever I have a video coming up. And I have a bot spam as well. So if you use bots that are in your Discord server like birthday bots or me6 or um, yak pd, if you have those bots, I recommend this being the channel, a bot spam channel where people can interact with it so they don't do it in a general chat so it's not spammy to other users. Then I have this section about me with basically my kind of content. And this is the ch general chats session where people can chat, a media session where people can drop some, some funny videos or pictures they make, some memes they made, games, they can talk about certain games, they can show their art they've made, 
they're looking for a group to play with. Here's a food channel. <laughs> I always love the food channel. I love to see food pictures. You can basically decide if you want these channels and how many you want. I do recommend having at least a general chat area where people can talk to each other. Depending on what you want your Discord to be about, if you play a certain game a lot and you want to interact with people about that game. For example, Overwatch, I just keep using it as an example right now. You can make an Overwatch channel as well, where people can talk about Overwatch, for example. Because I teach a lot of things about streaming. I do have some channels about streaming here as well. Some free stuff that people can get and thank me. This is just basically for my community. This is unique, so you don't have to have that. I've got some general voice channels and I have one that is locked, which means that nobody can go in except for me and my moderators. And I can only drag people in because if I'm live streaming, I don't want people to be able to jump in this chat themselves, but I want them to be able to be dragged in there. Then we have this whole moderation area for me with mods, messages, and log and stuff like that. You don't need that many channels for it. Just make sure that you have one admin channel that your admins and your mods can talk to each other and discuss if somebody needs to be banned or not. If you start out with a server, you can't make your announcement channel an actual announcement channel yet. But if you grow, you can have it to be an announcement channel. You see that this is an announcement channel. This is a text channel. So this means that we can publish things in this channel, basically. So if you click on a plus, we can see that there's multiple options here, which one of them is an announcement channel. People will get notifications for these things when they come out. With a stage channel, you can have host speak and people just listen in without being able to speak. But this is not available yet when you just start a server. I think the best thing you can do is think about why would people come to my Discord server and build your server around that. Because then you know what kind of channels you need to be. Are you about gaming? Make sure that you have some channels where people can talk about gaming. Do you do something creative? Have some channels where people can share something creative. If you have a server for a longer time, you'll see which channels are going to be active and which ones aren't active. Try to switch around delete the non-active channels, add something new in and see if that works better. Otherwise, just delete them. You don't have to add like 100 channels. Better to have 10 active channels than to have 100 channels where nobody is talking in. Another important thing is setting permissions. So for example, in the announcement channel, we don't want anybody to be able to type here. So we're gonna edit this channel, go to permissions. Everybody that's in this Discord can view the channel, yes. Manage the channel, no, we don't want them to be able to do things. Manage permissions, no. Webhook, no. Create invite, no. Send messages, no, not in this channel. Send messages and thread, no. Create public trust, no, 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 no. Add reactions, yes. This depends on what you want. If you want them to be able to react with an emote on it, you can just say yes, otherwise no. Uh, they can use external emotes on it, that's fine. And then the rest of it is no, except for message history. If you turn this off, people don't know what is set in that channel unless they are right there at that moment that it's being set. So I set this on yes and no, no. Okay, save. Now people can see what's being typed in here, but they can't type themselves. I can because I'm the app. We can set different permissions per category. So instead of like going for this one, because we don't want them to be able to type in the rules and roles and in the socials, we can also just set it for info instead. So if you right click on info, we can edit the category and we can edit the permissions here. If you set a permission for the category info, it will apply to all the channels in this category, except for announcements, because we just set everything for announcements manually. So manually for a channel overrides the one in a category. We can also set permissions per role. So we can add roles by going up here, server settings, roles. Here we can create roles for example, mod. I'm talking a lot more about roles in this video. So if you want to know more about roles, definitely check that out. And then what we can do is we can set these permissions per role. So we can plus here and click one of the other roles. We can also click on one of the members to set the permissions for them specifically. But if you have a big server, you probably want them for roles instead. So we can say noobs. They can also so talk, for example. So we can set this on set messages. So every time it's like on the middle part, it means we're not gonna take the rule from this channel, but we're gonna take it from the category info. So it's not set for those things, but we're gonna look at why is it set for in the info channel. You will get the highest permissions of your highest role. So for example, everybody can see this channel, but nobody can talk in it, but noobs can talk. So that means that if you have the role noob, you can talk even though you also are part of the group, everybody. So if I give you another rule as well, you still can talk because you are part of the role noob. 
So you get the highest permissions you get in one of the roles you have. I hope that's a bit clear. I'll make a template for streamers, what I think are the basics for a Discord server. I'll leave it down below in the description. So if you want to set up your own server, you can easily use that one to start out with. So it's basically super simple to start. And I bet you want to learn more about Discord. There's so much more to learn. So let's jump into this playlist all about Discord and I will see you there.